Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Ronnie Shaver from Ronnie's Garage in Southern California. And this is our monthly technical seminar via Zoom. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through this list. It's going to be on a 53R type. The reason I didn't open that radiator cap is it was pretty tight. And it's not, shouldn't be tight because somebody tightened it. It's, they've got these, um, the cap itself is like a phenolic plastic type material. So what I used is I used that drain plug tool. It's almost the right size, but the drain plug tool kind of usually works pretty good. It's a little loose, but the thing with these things is this plastic slash phenolic cap has threads on it and the radiator has brass threads. And what a lot of times happens is they have the seal on there. The seal is right there. Okay, that's a rubber seal that slides over there. Sometimes it gets bigger than the threads, but either way, that's full, okay? These uh, tanks, you don't wanna get too full this system is not, this one is got a little pressure relief valve. This, this, it's like a one pound, two pound. It has a little spring loaded valve on top. But anytime you see an old radiator, it has a big tank on top, never fill it to the top because they don't typically have expansion tanks. The coolant will get, uh, expand as it gets hot and it has to go someplace. So that's why there's a big air gap here so that it just compresses air up to the uh, relief pressure. This is not really a pressurized system. They started do getting serious about pressurizing when they start putting AC on them. Uh, they say maybe that. No, you just bring it up to the, the bottom of that opening. It was just the same on your solar cloud. Uh, just so long as you're covering the core. So if you look at it, that, that level there, I, I don't want to take that back out, it's so hard to get that one out, it's probably right about there. Mm -hmm. Coolant comes up here when it's coming out of the engine and it just has to, if you have a, enough to cover the core, it's going to distribute better. If, you, if it's below the top of the core, then what's going to happen is just going to go down the center and you're not going to get your full capacity. I usually go around and check the lights. Reverse lights, brake lights, brake lights and reverse lights work with the key on. So if you've got an automatic car, you just turn the key on, put it in reverse, you go to the back of the car and the lights that should come on for the reverse lights are these right here, these two right here. You turn on the light switch, this should light up. I'll go ahead and do that real quick. The little light on this is the license plate light. These are the reverse lights. Let's see if they come on. Oh, yeah, so th this is a manual transmission. I put it in reverse. Brake lights are back here. It's usually a two person job or you stick a brake pedal on there or a stick and see what happens. Yes? Okay, turn signals are kind of a pain because this has got a scintilla switch. It's a little timer, so you have to operate it and then run before the timer turns off. It's like an egg timer, only it's like 10 seconds. Okay, that one works. Do the other side. Is it working? I don't know, how about the horn? There it is. Oh, that's typical, yeah, that's moisture from, this car has been started and, and stopped and started and stopped a bunch of times coming in and out for a week or two. A moisture is going to build up. It's normal to get moisture. It's normal to get soot out of these old cars. So don't be alarmed if you see black, wet water behind your car on these old cars. Um, okay. So I like to lube this. This is your door latch. So I usually put it in, wipe it off. All right. Uh, the door. The door hinges have slides in them. They're behind that plate. Uh, they're really hard to get. See those chrome plates? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get in here and I'll just, uh, if you want to be serious about that, you take those chrome plates off. 
and they've got this really cool articulated sliding hinge. Uh, you can take the plates off and you'll see it. A uh, little lube on that. Always tighten these screws for the latch and for that. There are screws that hold in over here. You've got the striker screws and then this little thing, tighten those screws up. Okay. Get my hand out of here. Take some spray silicone and, and just go over the seal. This is just like a standard spray silicone and it's in an aerosol form and I always spray it on the rag and then wipe it on rubber. See that? And it just takes a little. What this does is it preserves the rubber a little bit and it uh, also uh, reduces squeaking. You're driving down the road and hear the squeaking and squeaking. That's one of the things that drives a lot of people crazy, including me, is these extra squeaks and rattles. Leather, if you want to condition your leather on a regular basis, uh, because I don't know if you know this, but just sitting on seats, sometimes you get a creak. And, and it's just a matter of, like, it's like our skin. That's cow skin. It needs some moisture every once in a while. Dead cow skin, so it's going to be more dried out than us. But, um, and I have found that most products that I use on my hands, usually pretty safe on the hands. But you always want to test it and replace if it's colored leather. Or you won't uh, run out there. Let's check the oil now. We're almost done here, folks. And once again, uh, feel free to email me and ask for a copy of the service checklist. I have them on PDF. It's really easy. Uh, the dipstick on this car is on the left side. As you can see, it's right here. Dipstick, those are the two big marks. You can see it's a big span between those two marks. And then Max. So the car, like I said, it's best first thing in the morning, but we're just going to do this. And we are, where are we? We're right about in the middle. And that's where I like to let them go. Because if you go right up to the max, they tend to leak more oil. That's just my experience. And when you think about it, there's eight quarts in there. Should be enough to keep it running. These cars will run on, I've seen them come, well, a quart and a half on a silver shadow before. You pull the drain plug out and nothing comes out, basically. And it's still running. Uh, so it's, uh, anyways, I think we covered most everything. So don't forget that uh, I'm working on another project. All garage matic and it's so close to launching, it's unbelievable. And we will be, for a nominal cost, supplying complete step-by-step -step visual, really high-quality video, and also written uh, procedures for doing different jobs on these different models. And, and we're, we're really going to work on trying to get as many different kinds of videos, many different jobs on many different cars as we well, I will also, everyone comes with a list of tools that I recommend that I've used over the years and found to be most efficient. And plus, you'll be able to buy whatever you need, if you want, right off the, the, the website. It's called Garage of Magic. So, Good job. Do something. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank awesome. You. Thank you, Ronnie. Take care, Thank you. everybody. Thanks, Ronnie.